Okay, well, thanks for coming, everyone. Welcome to a content audit of Drupal.org. You'll notice that it is no longer a live content audit, um, which is probably what you were expecting. But if you didn't know this already, Drupal.org is, is very complicated, and this audit was not without challenge. So instead, I'll walk you through the audit process, and we'll also discuss those challenges as they relate to all your Drupal sites. So my name is Leah Keen-Tall. I'm the director of SEO and content strategy at JB Media Group. We're a digital marketing company based in Asheville, North Carolina. And I also teach SEO classes online and in person in Asheville. So thanks for having me. Um, today, what we're going to cover are content audits, why they're important, questions, questions audits answer, how to ask the right questions, tools for answering those questions and more. And we have a whole lot to cover, so I'd appreciate it if you could save your questions till the end as this is highly instructional. So I'm going to be using two sites for examples during this audit. First, Drupal.org, and secondly, Blue Ridge National Heritage Area, which is a Drupal site that showcases the unique history, character, and natural beauty of the Blue Ridge Mountains, which is where I live. Uh, at the end of this presentation, I hope you'll feel excited about digging into your own content data and finding new opportunities to enhance content on your Drupal sites. So why do we need content audits? We really need content audits because, well, the majority of most content strategies look something like this. It's right, all the content, and it's not really a sustainable approach, especially with no solid strategy behind it. So that is where a content audit comes in. A content audit is an exploration of and a reflection on the performance of your website content. So your content are your pages, your posts, all of the meaty information that your site communicates. And there will always be more and more content out there to compete against. So content audits allow us to explore and reflect and ultimately work smarter and not harder on our content strategies. So I love content audits and the process of doing them because they are, in essence, feedback loops. Your content output is used for the new input as you regularly create content over time. So typically, in this loop, you begin with a content strategy, then create content, then publish it, market it, wait. And this is the piece where a lot of people go away, but it's the most fun part. And that's when the audit comes in, where you measure and assess the impact of the audit, learn from the results, and use that to inform the next round of strategy and goal setting. That allows you to, instead of continuously writing more and more content, instead you might improve or better leverage what you already have using the data you gather. I organize content audits by asking and answering important questions about how content impacts your overall site performance. So some questions that co content audits answer include, what is performing best? What isn't performing well and could or should perform better? And what poorly performing content could be removed from the site altogether or doesn't actually serve your site goals? And also, the process of asking these questions leads to uncovering new opportunities. And that's really the most fun part. So before we get going, we need to understand what does perform mean? So to understand content performance, we need to consider its purpose and the intent behind it. Maybe the purpose is to boost your keyword rankings or your site traffic or your authority. Maybe it's about growing your email list or generating software downloads or product demo requests. Um, or maybe it's as simple as improving your overall site engagement metrics like time on page or pages per session. The purpose will be different depending on uh, your site and also each different type of content that you're producing. And to demonstrate an audit, we need a real site that has a real purpose and since we're here at DrupalCon, I figured we could pick on Drupal.org, which may not have been my wisest idea ever. But hey, we are all invested in the Drupal community and what is open source about if it's not about transparency and learning. So let's do it. The first step is to explore your whys. And what does that mean? Your whys are your purpose. 
the purpose of your entire website. It can get really deep here. So why do people visit Drupal.org? Why go to Drupal.org and not Joomla or WordPress? How do potential users benefit from their Drupal.org experience? So your site purpose becomes goals. And goals are what we want to measure content against for our audit. So what, for the purpose of this audit, what is one of Drupal.org's purposes? So Dries says, come for the software, stay for the community. That the community itself is more important than just managing the code base. So why come to Drupal.org? For the community, of course. So if our purpose is building community, then building community is a goal of our site. And if building community support that goal or impact that goal, then we have to understand how do we know if that goal itself has been achieved? So how do we measure building community using site data? Now it's time to go through some logic work. If we define community as engaged users on forums, contributors to modules, and documentation on Drupal.org, and in order to become one of those engaged community members, you must first register, then presumably more registrations at Drupal.org will equal more community. So in our content audit, we want to audit the relationship between content on the site and registrations so we can contribute to our goal of building community. So finding the correct relationship between content and site goals is essential to an effective content audit, but it can also be and often is the trickiest part. In fact, I'm regularly reminded of the logic demonstrated in this classic Monty Python scene. Um, and it, because if you do not ask the right questions or you have an incorrect expectations of your content and how your content impacts your site performance, then you can end up in some really messy logic scenarios that result in an improper content analysis. Any Monty Python fans out there? <laughs> right on. Um, so I like to say all the time, um, the art and science of asking questions is the source of all knowledge for certainly a content audit and really life. So now we have a measurable goal and we can actually begin our audit process. Registered users can participate in the Drupal community, so we want to increase registrations. Our content audit now can ask appropriate questions. Which pages convert and we'll want to analyze those, see what to replicate, and see if we can improve them further. Uh, we also want to know which relevant pages convert to the fewest registrations and look at those pages, consider why and what we could do to change that if it's relevant. Um, for this stage of the audit, we're going to rely on Google Analytics and the Drupal site itself. So the best way to analyze content data and analytics if, is if it's already tied to a goal that's been set up in your admin area. So this screenshot shows uh, Drupal.org's goals in the admin area. Fortunately, the registration goal has already been tracking in analytics for a long time, which is key because it means we have a wealth of historic data we can use to analyze the performance of our content over time. So if you haven't set up goals yet, like do that today. Um, and we can analyze content against all of those specific goals. So if they hadn't had, if Drupal.org hadn't had this goal set up, I wouldn't have been able to do this part of the audit. So now we're asking which pages convert to registrations best. Here we are in the reporting section of Drupal's analytics. We are looking at the top landing pages, meaning the first sites, the first pages on the site through which visitors enter, and those with the best conversion rate for user <coughs> registrations from sessions. The top converting pages we see here include the forum page, which is really no surprise, 10 per, over a 10% conversion rate, and then a lot of what else is in the top converting from sessions to registrations are individual forum posts. 
uh, we'll, we're going to dig into that a little more, but first we need to check how we're looking at our data. We want the most appropriate data if we're going to make inferences that affect decision making for our site strategy. So we want to make sure we're looking at the right data. So Drupal.org gets a whole lot of return visitors, which is fantastic. That's what we want. That's, that's an indicator of good community involvement if people are returning to the site over and over. But we do not want to judge content that's regularly getting return visitors against our registration goals since return visitors have hopefully already registered as users. New users, on the other hand, haven't had a chance to register yet. There's, it's their first time on the site. So that is the audience that we're after, and those are the areas we really want to explore, since we know that's where the most opportunity is, and we have the right measurement going on. So fortunately with analytics, you can do so much with filters um, to limit pages that aren't matching the intent of what the data we want to look at. So I filtered our top converting landing pages here to show only pages that have more than 50% new visitors uh, and over 5,000 sessions, because right now I want to see the best of the best so we can learn from that. So these are the two of the top converting pages. The forum itself, the main forum page, this is the one that was a 10%, over 10% conversion rate, uh, and an individual post on the forum. We also see calls to action embedded on the forum in the post that let it, lets us know that, users, peop, that new users need to log in to post or comment. So log in here is the call to action for registration to become a registered user in our goal. So again, this is no surprise. We would expect forum pages and posts to generate more registrations. Um, and the call to action is, this is commonly understood when it comes to forums and engagement on forums that you have to log in to do that. All right. So now let's talk about what pages aren't converting well. I have this view in analytics sorted by most new users. I'm looking for pages that it makes sense for a user to potentially register from, and those types of pages that get a whole lot of traffic but have a low conversion rate to new registered users. So here we see the home page gets a significant amount of traffic. I mean, it's a ton, it's crazy. Uh, and generates a, lot of, a whole lot of registrations but less than 1% convert to new registrations from the home page. Uh, this other, in the third spot here on the landing page, that's a, that's a page about understanding Drupal 7, and there's also one for understanding Drupal 8 that we could infer the same thing about, but it didn't match my criteria for sessions. It soon will. Um, but understanding Drupal 7 page converts at 0.42%, but 93% of the visitors to that page are brand new users. Uh, that is really exciting because it's a huge opportunity if we want to improve community through registrations. That's just the kind of thing that we're looking to uncover in a content audit. Um, we want those new users coming to understand Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 to get involved in the community right away and make it really simple for them to do that. So then we have to dig into these pages, actually just spend some time looking at them. On the home page, we see there's no call to action that takes a new user to the registration page. So that explains the lower conversion rates. Um, but this page shows massive potential. It's like scary exciting. There's over 100,000 new users every month that come to Drupal.org. So imagine what that would mean if we could improve the conversion rate from less than 1% to, to even 3%. That would be thousands and thousands of new registered users every month. Um, and here's the Drupal 7 documentation page. Again, we see there isn't really a call to action to join the community. Uh, and we can imagine the same is true for the Drupal 8 page. And again, it's important over nine page are brand new. So we've uncovered some big opportunities here. Let's review. The forum page results in the most registrations. Individual forum posts 
also convert while using the phrase login to post comments or questions, the home page and documentation page do not result in many registrations. Top visited pages don't include calls to action. An overall conversion rate could be higher site-wide, because site-wide is less than 1%. Insights are where we, this is us rounding the, the content audit feedback loop. So insights are what we learn from the findings of our audit, and we ultimately use that to impact our content strategy and goal setting moving forward. So what did we learn? So uh, we could better highlight registration calls to action. These would be the types of recommendations that come out of your audit. We could consider adding registration calls to action on pages that have a high amount of new user traffic where they don't exist. We may want to diversify what, what our calls to action are for registration. Like if forum users understand that you need to log in to post, but other users may not make the connection but that re logging in to comment or post is essentially your first step to becoming a Drupal.org community member. When we get to our content strategy, maybe we'll want to consider some other more compelling calls to action, like join our community or contribute to the Drupal project or add your voice and talent. Um, and we may also need to take another look at the registration page itself. If we're changing the calls to action that drive people to that page, we'll need that page itself to reflect the motivations of all the different people that came there from different parts of the site. So I just threw some calls to action on there just to get a so it is, uh, and I join our community. What if that happened? Uh, and then we could just test it. And this is what the strategy team would really have to consider. And then you just look at it. Did it improve our conversion rates or not? Uh, the home page, you know, I'm pretty giddy about this opportunity. Uh, if building community is a top priority, then maybe we want to reflect that on the home page itself and just make front and center. Um, here's the Drupal 7 documentation page again. You know, you could say maybe if 93% are new users coming to this page, letting them know that not only can they learn more about Drupal 7 or on the Drupal 8 page learning about Drupal 8 here, but also if they're involved in the community, they get a lot of support and they learn about updates and more. You know, they might come out to DrupalCon. Uh, so in here it is the registration page itself. So this is the gateway to us, our conversion rate. Um, so it's step one to becoming a community member. So let's look at it. Let's take this to our strategy team and review and say, could this, could this be better? Maybe it could speak more to the different types of audiences that we're attracting in the different levels or why someone should join the community uh, and, and use that type of like verbiage. You could maybe add a photo of the community itself. Uh, if I'm considering becoming a new, a new community member and a user, I want to like see myself in that community and in that crowd. So again, this is where we bring our insights to our designer, our strategy team, and see, see what they think. So that's because the point of the audit is not to find the solutions, but to point out the opportunities themselves. Then, you, when you, after you do that and you bring the insights from the audit to the strategy team, they do that. It's your developer, designer, SEO expert, all of these people that ha might have more insights based on just what's happening with the content on your site. And they work together to build a new strategy that's actually made from data, performance data from, for content on your site. It's possible that maybe there's a, there's a bigger reason why there aren't these other type calls to actions on these landing pages. <coughs> Um, but we wouldn't know that. We're just finding the opportunities. So sites, especially really large and complex sites like Jubal.org, and really all of your sites, will have many different goals and many different angles for a content audit. So let's take another angle. So we need to think of our whys again so we have something else to measure our content against. So why else do people search out Drupal? It's for the platform. The, 
many different levels of admin, of how secure it is, the flexibility, the open source and the community. Uh, if we can get more people who are interested in those features onto Drupal.org, when they're researching what potential platform they need for their website projects, that would be a big win. So let's think about it in terms of industry sectors. Which industry sectors most benefit from Drupal's key features? Governments, higher ed, large nonprofits, finance, um, anybody that needs something complex that has all of the capabilities to build really fun sites. Um, so let's focus on governments for this part of the audit. In a full audit, we would do all of the major industry sectors since those are the types of audiences we're trying to build traffic from. So our goal is to improve traffic from government audience users who are looking, who are searching online for which CMS is right for them. So our audit will dig into the relationship between content on Dribble.org and building traffic to the some of these that aren't necessarily familiar with Drupal yet. So now we can ask our audit questions. Do we rank for government related searches currently? For what keywords and where are we positioned currently in search results? And then of course, where can we improve and what can we learn from that? Uh, for this part, we're going to use Google Keyword Planner, Ahrefs, which is my, one of my favorite SEO tools, uh, Analytics, and Google Search. So first, we want to get a pulse on what our search opportunities are by doing a little keyword research. Um, well, there are many tools out there for doing for looking at keyword data. I still I still always go back to Google's own keyword planner, and this allows us to make not make assumptions about the user group that we want to target. We can instead see exactly how they search, um, which search phrases are more popular, and, and we can ensure our pages properly reflect how our target audiences are searching. So it turns out that the government keywords combined with other phrases like CMS, website platform, content management system, all of these phrases that might reflect the type of user we're hoping to draw to our site, it results in a combined 90 searches a month on average. But there's really a whole lot more because these days people search using much longer strings of words. Um, and it may not seem like a whole lot, but by adding these large, new large website projects, it does a lot to enhance and extend the Drupal community and credibility and trust and all of that. So the search volumes also give us an idea about the potential amount of search traffic we could expect to generate, which is really helpful because in turn, it helps us assess the effectiveness of our content at acquiring these numbers of traffic. Um, it also helps us know which exact keyword phrases generate the most search. Phrases CMS for GMS. So for our audit, we're asking, does Drupal.org currently rank in Google search results for any of the government-related searches we've uncovered in our keyword research? And for which of those keywords, if any? Now we're going to use Ahrefs, my favorite tool. And this gives us key information for organic search and a host of other things, but it's probably the best for that. Um, here we can see which government keywords Drupal.org currently shows up in search results for on the first page, and which specific pages appear for those keywords. We see that Drupal shows up for the keyword government sites with 350 searches per month at the bottom of the first page of search results in the ninth position. Uh, the page appearing list is a, just a page that lists all of the government sites around the world that are using Drupal. So what does this mean to us for a content audit? What we want to consider here is if the page is showing up and the keywords this is only what they're showing, these are only the keywords they're showing up for on the first page of search results. So we want to say, does that reflect our goal? The search government sites does not likely reflect 
a potential government audience user type who's searching for a CMS solution for building their new site. We should also take note here that the top phrases that we did look at in our keyword research, like government CMS, do not appear here, which means Drupal.org doesn't appear on the first page of search results for that phrase. So we're uncovering a lot of room for improvement. So how, how can we improve? How can we change that? Uh, in a content audit, when we're talking about keywords and keyword rankings and traffic from specific audiences, we're looking for opportunities to potentially enhance or optimize existing pages on our site that are more appropriate for the search phrases we want to target. Or, if those don't exist, we need to, it, we need to understand if we need to develop a new page for that audience and set new goals. And that would be, again, shifting back to the strategy side, but our insight would be, there is no page that targets this audience. So before we dig into what pages could potentially be enhanced for the government audience, we need to better understand the current search results and how competitive those search results are. It may not be reasonable to expect that our site can appear in the top of search results or rank for the keywords we're interested in. That is the case for many, many sites. Um, so we want to, especially if the current results are highly authoritative, so we need to analyze further to see if there's even, a, if we're on the, if we're barking up the wrong tree. Um, so here we're looking at the search results page for CMS for government. We want to be here. Um, Ahrefs has a great browser plugin that allows us to look at the authority scores and link profiles of all the sites appearing in search results, which helps us understand if Drupal.org can compete here. So authority scores are projections of a site's overall strength based on Google ranking factors. So I'm gonna zoom in here on the top page. These are the top two on page one of search results, a .gov site listing CMS uses by various agencies in Acquia, go Acquia. Uh, nicely done, very well optimized there. Um, we see that their domain authority scores are 62 and 66, which is really good. Um, we also can see individual page authority scores. So when it comes to search results, your entire domain has a score, and every individual page on your website has a score, because it's, each individual page has its own potential for appearing in search results. So for Drupal.org to show up, we need both a high domain authority score and a comparable page authority score is the most suited for the search that we're targeting. So further down on page one for CMS for government, competitor alert. Um, and they are, they're, so WordPress is here and revised, which I didn't know about. Uh, but their domain authority scores are 64 and 58. Where's Drupal? They don't appear until the fifth page of search results. Uh, and the page that does appear isn't really relevant to the broad government audiences we're interested in targeting. But, get this, the domain authority score is crazy high. It's like, move over Wikipedia. Like, 78, that is such a high authority score. Um, it's at least 10 points higher than any other site in the current search results. And what that tells us is that with little work, some basic optimization, and time, Drupal.org should be able to land on the first page of results easily. And I would think in the number two spot fairly quickly. So, there are existing pages so are there existing pages that could rank better and properly target the government audience we're pursuing, especially because we know now that we have the strength as a site and the authority as a site to really to be in those search results. So here we can look at Google Analytics again to review all the Drupal pages that include, I usually just search for what I'm looking for, all the Drupal pages that include government and their URL and just kind of review them to see if there are any contenders for improvement, and I just sort it by most page views. Um, and then look at the engagement metrics there too. Uh, so here we see a, one of the top pages is a resource page for launching a government website. That sounds pretty good. Uh, let's, that's something we'll want to kind of take note of, like let's flag that to review. Super useful. But there's also this page 
uh, which is super exciting. This page does exactly what we want, and it initial traffic because it's a, it's a new page. It was just launched in February, but it's doing exactly what we need. It's targeting the government audience and answering the whys. Why would this government audience type may want to consider Drupal for their website projects? So the Drupal.org team is totally on the right track here. Um, our audit would then flag this page as a major opportunity for improvement and highlighting or just consideration. Let's look at it again and see if it can do more now. So let's review this phase of the audit. So Drupal.org ranks on the first page of search results only for two like, government keywords. Uh, and those, those keywords themselves aren't relevant to the audience that we're looking to attract. Uh, they do not rank for the top most searched government terms that we're interested in, like government CMS. Um, pages that currently show up in re search results aren't, there was like a page about an Australian Drupal government module. That was the first one on that page five. So that doesn't reflect the types of pages we want to be appearing in search results for the intent of the, uh, this, the, the way that this audience is searching online. And we know our more appropriate pages, which exist, are not earning a lot of traffic. And Drupal.org has crazy high authority score and can easily do better. This is a, such an exciting place to be in because small changes will make fast, will impact your site quickly. So our insights. We know we have a very appropriate new page ripe for building search traffic from the government audience. And we want to make sure that page is properly optimized for the intent of the searcher who is researching which CMS is right for their needs and they're looking to build a government site. Um, what I also uncovered in, in finding that page is that there's a whole handful of new industry-focused pages that essential to what we're looking at here for the government industry page and, and do the same for the page that's devoted to higher ed. Um, and, and all the other kind of the, the finance industry and the other pages that are being, that have just recently been built as well. This is the point where you take the insight of the audit, the insights, and bring them to your strategy team, your developer, your designer, your SEO expert, and build a new strategy made from data. Um, I can't help it. I love go, like this curve where you get from insight to strategy. So what you might want to do at this point is check if your government page is properly optimized for the searches that we're targeting. We could check out our metadata. Could it be improved? This is how that page is currently appearing in search results. The meta title is Jubal for Government. Maybe it could be CMS for Government since our target audience might not yet know what Drupal is. And they're just looking for a solution. Um, and also that the CMS for government is one of our top keywords. So it's just something to consider. Um, side tip here, if you've never done a content audit before, a, a lot of people start with doing, a, a con including in the content audit, something that focus he focuses heavily on your metadata to make sure your metadata is all optimized, um, especially if, if it's your first time. So if you want to do that, I recommend using a tool called Screaming Frog which is an amazing tool that crawls your website and exports all of your pages in a tidy spreadsheet that has like your meta title and your meta description and it makes it super easy to review and edit. So further strategy insights, uh, we'll probably want to reevaluate the copy on the new government page as well to ensure some of our keywords from the keyword research are included here. Uh, we see phrases like CMS and content management system don't really appear much on that page, even if, even though that's possible from the keyword research, how some people are, are searching out solutions. Um, so maybe our strategy team may want to consider some SEO editing in the future. Um, in our content audit, we also discovered which government pages on Drupal.org currently get the most traffic. Uh, we'll want to be sure to interlink those pages to the new government industries page to help us better create better user navigation regardless of where those new users are showing up. So because it takes time for the new page to appear in search results, 
pe people who are interested are, are arriving on, on other less appropriate places on the site. So we want to make sure we interlink them all. And that also supports the authority growth of the new page that we want to be number one in search results for CMS for Government. Uh, and that'll help it rise in search results more quickly doing that interlinking. So it turns out Drupal team is already on it, which is exciting. Uh, they've added a link to the new uh, industry page on that resource page that we uncovered as a, a good feature, like the, the resource page that's about building a government website. And they could do the same on the current page that we know gets the most traffic from search from the government audience, which is the list of Drupal government sites. So you could throw in there another link over to the new industries page. Drupal has also linked their new industry page to their government case studies. Beautiful. This is great. It's super user friendly. It looks nice. Um, so they've clearly already rounded the bend from taking content audit insights to strategy and execution. Uh, and then we could just repeat the process for each of the other industry audiences to round out a full audit. audit. So, so far we have been looking at how to do a content audit where it's tied specifically to site goals. But you may be out there going like, well, what if we never had any goals? Or what if we never had a strategy? I mean, what if, what if you're among the many? It's really content. And that's OK, because that is a whole lot of sites, especially these days with the whole content is king, more and more and more. Um, so a lot of sites aren't necessarily thinking strategically when developing content. That is when a content audit is super important and also really fun, because you don't know what you're going to uncover. Uh, it's a little more loose. Um, and that will, doing the audit at this point gives you key information that will help you set goals and strategize moving forward. So if you don't have specific goals in mind, I always ask a few key questions and use some additional tools, which I'll share now. And from this point forward, I'm going to use the Blue Ridge National Heritage Area site, which was the other Drupal site. So again, we're going to use questions to shape our audit. For a basic audit, we want to know which pages have the best and worst click-through rates and which keywords have the best and worst click-through rates. So a good click-through rate indicates that pages perform well at driving traffic from search results into our site. So that's something we want to understand more about on our site. You can use Google Search Console in the Search Analytics section to review this information. And Google keeps making updates to Search Console, and it's really getting better and better all the time at giving great insights into your content on your site. So uh, what you do here is you just find the best conversion rates and the worst. You review those pages and then learn from the best, improve or remove the rest. Uh, again, you can also look at the queries themselves, like what keyword phrases are leading to the highest click-through rates to your website and the worst, and that can help you kind of reevaluate the approach to your overall website messaging. Additional audit basics, including asking questions about content engagement. Uh, which pages of your, of your site have the most engagement and which, ha which have the least? Uh, for engagement metrics, we want to go again into analytics and use our filters. It will show us to show pages that have a low bounce rate, less than 50%, and pages that have multiple pages per session. So for here, I think I did a, a, over two pages per session. So that would indicate an engaged user on the site. Um, users that are spending more time on your site or moving through your site are finding what they're looking for. They are happy users. When you have highly engaged users, over time Google takes note, you're demonstrating that you are a good search result for however someone got there, and you can therefore expect to do better and earn more traffic. So we want to pay attention to what we're doing right here so we can replicate it throughout our site. Um, so th these are the actual analytics pages from those filters for Blue Ridge National Heritage Area. Um, again, we review the re results look at these top pages, and learn. Uh, and if I want to see the pages with the worst engagement, I simply flip the filters, just reverse the filters, and that's what you have. Additional basic audit questions include asking what are the top, key what the top keywords are 
And if those top pages getting the most organic traffic on your site could be improved to rank higher in search results and move, earn more traffic, this is oftentimes the low-hanging fruit area. Because if you're already doing well, maybe you could do just a little better, and it won't take that much. Um, I also like to look at keywords and pages for which a site appears on the second page of search results and see if there are many major opportunities to move on to the first page, because uh, that would be a quick, a quick win. Um, Ahrefs, again, is awesome at, at doing this. Um, so here we see the top pages earning search traffic and which keywords earn the most for Blue Ridge National Heritage Area. We see Blue Ridge Parkway is a top term, sending traffic. There's an estimated 61,000 searches for that phrase, which is amazing. Um, but our site is currently towards the bottom of the first page. So we're only getting a fraction of that. Maybe in our do that page, move up in search results if we edit or better optimize it. Uh, and we'd also have to look at the comparative authority scores using the Ahrefs toolbar to see what is in search results and if it's even possible for us to compete there. So our audit would list this as an opportunity for strategic review. I, if I was doing, I would look at the first three pages of search results, really, if you have a, a reasonably sized site and see what's appearing on all those pages. So that's, again, we're rounding the bend from the audit itself to strategizing. Uh, and this is just a bonus because this is a tool I really love. It's called Answer the Public. When I find a term I think a site can rank higher for or start building a whole lot more traffic on, I run it through this, um, which this tool spits out all the top questions that surround a topic. And it has a really nice visual to it too, so it's great. It's really handy if you have to share it with a team. Um, so maybe our Blue Ridge Parkway page that's in the sixth search result position could move up if we make sure we're answering more of the top questions that users have about, about the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, again, this is where you assemble your strategy team, share your audit insights, and move from there. So, I have a few minutes left before we move to questions, and I want to talk a little bit about the audit challenges <coughs> slash opportunities. And this really affects Drupal sites in particular. So Drupal.org was really tricky to audit. Uh, for one, it's massive. There's over 5 million index pages, which is insane. Um, but really, the biggest challenge comes down to URL structures. <coughs> so initially, I had wanted to audit the case study sections of Drupal.org to see which, which types of case studies were generating the most engagement or leading through to accomplishing some other types of goals. But I couldn't, I couldn't even get started um, because of the URL structure. So this shot shows the Rainforest Alliance Drupal 8 redesign case study. And the URL path is node slash 2819677. A better URL would have been something that includes case study and maybe mentions the category of the case study, like nonprofit, so that we can analyze the performance of those types of content and pages together in analytics. Here's one of the types of views that I was frequently faced with when I was trying to do my audit. And I have to say it's oh no. <laughs> It's terrible. <laughs> so right now, I mean, it's not terrible because it can be changed. It's like huge opportunity. Because um, trying to analyze content by content type isn't currently possible. And that's so important because different types of content typically have the same goals. So case studies or your how-tos or your or certain types of blog posts you want to be able to have them grouped together in analytics so you can assess them as a whole and, and learn in groups. So which case studies are performing best? Which are performing worst? How can we apply that to the rest on the site? On the contrary, for Blue Ridge National Heritage Area, if we want to audit a type of content, the URL structure allows us to do that easily. So highlighted here, I have a section that links to many pages that cover music the, of the Blue Ridge region. Um, for a content audit, I'd want to know which of the music pages are performing best and which are performing worst. So I can improve this section for our users 
and tell everyone about the great music of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, because the URL structure includes music instead of node, uh, we can assess them as a group. And here I'm showing all of the pages and considering which ones have the best engagement metrics. And it's so beautiful. <laughs> so we're all, these are clean URLs. And it's not just good for analyzing your data, it's also much better for SEO. When we began working with this site, their URL structure was also, it was all nodes, the paths were all nodes. Um, so we added a module, or the developer, somebody added a module for clean URLs, and just doing that doubled traffic to the website. Yeah. <laughs> Takeaways. So first, be sure to find your content wise. That's your site purpose, and that becomes your site goals. And without understanding that, why are we writing content anyway? Um, be al also be sure to ask the right questions of your content so you don't end up in the Monty Python logic mess. Um, and measure your content performance against your site goals when possible. And keep in mind that the purpose of the audit is not to solve all of your challenges or provide all the solutions. It's really about finding those opportunities and then building a team to figure out what to do with those opportunities. Um, and then, of course, make sure you have those clean URLs. Um, so you can have useful data collection and have better SEO. Uh, and, and do not fear the process, really. Content, content audits should happen regularly, I think, at least once per year. But if you're producing a whole lot of content, you could do it more often. Or you could do it in pieces. Um, and that means you get plenty of opportunities to practice. And the act of practicing a content audit helps you build the way in which you have insights that affect strategy uh, and, and kind of support that content feedback loop. So you'll become better at asking the right questions and generating impactful insights. So I hope you all will consider conducting your own content audits in the very near future because content audits catalyze the feedback loop revolution that leads to the evolution of your website and all good websites are in a constant state of evolution. Um, so I want to just put out a quick reminder to check out the contribution sprints on Friday. Uh, and if you haven't already read org and help improve our registration conversion rates. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for your time. I think we have about 10 minutes for questions. Um, I'm happy to answer now. And if we don't get through them all, we do have a booth. JV Media has a booth here, too. And you can come see us there. particularly at niche audience types like, a gov like the government, how do you do the keyword research in a way where you, where you aren't making assumptions but really honing in on how that audience searches. Um, and what I think the most powerful thing to do that's often left off from the keyword research process is actually just looking at the search results themselves. And that's where that Ahrefs toolbar is really handy um, because you know, I don't work for Drupal.org, so I was making assumptions based on um, just based on some thinking about who is the most appropriate audience. But had I had I done this with Drupal.org, there's a, there's a great I, I would do some fact finding about actually speaking to the the audience that you're looking to and having real conversations with them. And then using the way that that audience talks about themselves and their needs to, to put, plug that in the keyword planner and then look at the actual search results themselves afterwards. Does that answer your question? So you're looking at the um, search results within Google Analytics, the referring searches? Or 
or actually doing a web search and then looking at the results for both? I'm looking at the actual Google search results for any phrase that I think might be relevant because it's really easy to accidentally like, to think you're optimizing for something that's right that isn't. So for example, CMS for government is totally appropriate. The search results matched up to, you know, when you start seeing, especially if you start seeing your own competitors in the search results, that's a good indicator. Um, but sometimes if you flip the phrasing, you can't assume the intent of the search. So I think if you always default to what you feel like the motivation is of the search, then that's the best way to move forward. And then you just analyze your data and adjust after your content audits. Can you, can you use the college example? That was a good example where you, it wasn't the right audience, right? When you were doing this. Oh, yeah. So when I was doing this uh, audit ahead of time, there was a, I, I was looking, at first I was thinking I wasn't going to do governments, I was going to do higher education. So I started doing just general keyword research and I had, um, it was like university CMS, but the actual search results are about a university whose initials are CMS. So, you know, that's why it's so important to look, because CMS for government was triggering the search results that included competitors, but university CMS wasn't. So I just decided not to really get into that. But thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> and, Question. A lot of times I've seen the Google Analytics results have a lot of spam or bots kind of populating a lot of data and there's a jump. How do we uh, filter that out? I've seen some strategies, but what's your... Uh, what? So the question is about spam, Google's uh, analytics spam, which has really been a major problem over the last like year and a half. Um, what I do is filter it out as best as possible, and I feel like every couple months I have, I just look up another strategy for filtering it out because people keep finding new ways of inserting spam in there and it does, it's, what it really affects are your engagement metrics for sure. Um, so my recommendation is to just follow some of the guides for removing the spam as best as possible and then everything we look at, because we can never have the completely clean data and that's why I always default to just making inferences and not being too tied to exact numbers, which is really hard, probably especially for a crowd like this. Um, but it's an imperfect, it is imperfect. And that's also maybe something to be happy about. <laughs> I wonder, um, you mentioned this uh, being impressed by like, the domain authority, but what goes into that number, the page authority and the domain authority? The question was about uh, domain authority and page authority and how those numbers come to be. Um, so tools like Ahrefs, and there's another uh, SEO Moz. Moz is another toolbar that has its own version of an authority score. Um, this, this is just in, it's in their own inference based on that tool's understanding of what contributes to your ability to rank in search results. So for Ahrefs, which is the most powerful, the number of domains that link to your domain is a significant factor in the power of your site to be higher in search results. But there's also dozens and dozens, and, and we, we can only guess at the, the level of impact they have because you know, Google's just not going to tell us, unfortunately. But it's like the, the of your site such a huge domain authority score is because the site itself is so massive. Um, and lots of people link to it. And that's a big deal. There's constantly new content coming out. All of those things matter. Um, but the biggest things are really how many other domains link to your own, how big your site is, are you producing content that's optimized. Those are kind of the, the main things. All right, well, thanks for coming. If you have any other questions, please come find me or please email me, anything like that, and come see us at our JB Media booth. Um, I appreciate your time today. Have a great DrupalCon.